We're going to move on now to trans rights. There have been many anti-LGBTQ plus bills introduced and enacted, outlawing things like gender affirming health care and banning kids from playing sports. To go deeper into this issue, here with us today is Dylan Mulvaney, who's welcomed us into her life by, you know, showing on social media her girlhood series. Let's take a look. Day one of being a girl, and I have already cried three times. I wrote a scathing email that I did not send. I ordered dresses online that I couldn't afford. And then uh, when someone asked me how I was, I said, I'm fine, when I wasn't fine. So. How'd I do, ladies? Good? Girl power. Day 66, being a girl, and today I'm in nature. Trees, I love them. Water, lakes, I love them. Heels, they're my hiking heels. I love them. Okay, come on. Day 74 of being a girl, round of applause for the makeup. And I wore this outfit shopping today. And I thought that these might be my new shopping shorts, but I was walking around and everyone was staring. And I was like, oh, okay, what's going on? And they were all staring directly at my crotch. And I went, oh, I forgot that my crotch doesn't look like other women's crotches sometimes because mine doesn't look like a little Barbie pocket. Women having bulges sometimes because we're coming up on bikini season, baby. And you might see a bulge or two. So normalize the bulge. We are normalizing the bulge. Women can have bulges and that's okay. Day 75 of being a girl and I've been carrying around tampons and pads for the past two months, but I've actually never opened one up. So let's do it, woohoo. I thought the letters stood for small, medium, and large based on the size of your Barbie pouch. But after a Google, I found out it's actually the level of your flow. So they're super, regular, and light. I guess my question is which one do I carry around, the super? Because maybe if you have a light flow, you can still use a super? I don't know. Uh, Mr. President, this is my 221st day of publicly transitioning. God and, love you. Uh, do you think states should have a right to ban gender affirming health care? I'm not being facetious when I say this, being seen with people like you. No, I mean it. I genuinely mean it. People fear what they don't know. They fear what they don't know. And when people realize, individuals realize, oh, this is what they're telling me to be frightened of. This is the problem. This is, I mean, people change their minds. People are just don't know enough to know. And it's not because of intellectual incapability. It's just lack of exposure. We hope that everything you heard tonight encourages you to make your mark this November 8th by casting your vote for the future you want to see. Have a good night. Vote, vote, vote. And we're committed to advancing transgender equality in the classroom, on the playing field, at work, in our military, in our housing and healthcare systems, everywhere, simply everywhere. Uh, something brief, uh, Dr. Ziegler, would you be interested in providing that to the community and back to school? Uh, everything that Mr. Mehevdi mentioned is part of the rollout plan. So we have a, a pretty robust indoctrination plan uh, ready to go enculturation plan for this ready to go as we move into the new school year. Thank you, Dr. Ziegler. I, I was just going by where the items were on the slide. So we have a, a pretty robust indoctrination plan. Hi, I'm Nadine, a sex educator. And I'm Eva, a sex researcher. I use the pronouns she and her because I'm a woman and when I was your age I used to be a girl. Gender is how you feel on the inside about whether you're a boy or a girl, a man or a woman. If you're non-binary, feel like neither or both. People can also be fluid, feel more like female, more like male, on a, based on a different day or time. It's really individual. Absolutely. Everyone born with a vulva is a girl. True or false? Or identifies as a girl. Not everybody is sure, and that makes sense. But our genitals actually don't determine our gender. So some people born with vulvas can be boys. Bro, they getting out of hand, bro. I'm just trying to buy my baby some books, bro. B is for buy. C is for coming out. D is for drag. These are children books, guys. These are children books. Non-binary, non what? Listen, this is picture books. This is picture books. My four-year-old don't know what the fuck non-binary is. Matt, I, I, want, I want to show this to you. You're a parent, right? Okay? It's, it's perfectly normal for 10 years and up. Here's just one page I want you to see here.
For 10 and up, huh? It's, it's unspeakable what these people have done to our children. Do you think kids should be at Pride? Yeah. I am non-binary. Yeah? I have the perfect cape for it. A flag. Yes, 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 yes. It is uh, fantabulous. I don't care if any, anyone says no if this is not fantabulous, because it is fantabulous. Uh, you think kids can get the word out? Yeah, I really do. It's important to talk to kids about this stuff because if you don't, you know, they could have made a big change that you never knew about. Kids are very powerful. Kids are being taught. You might feel like you're a boy, even if you have a vagina and you're a girl. You are what you feel you are. Some people are girls, some are boys, some are both, some are neither. Gender is all about how we feel on the inside and how we express ourselves. Ah, the gender fluid teacher. What do I go by in the classroom? I go by teacher Fambrini. As a queer and trans teacher, my agenda is to show little boys that they don't have to be like as stereotypically masculine as they can like paint their nails and wear earrings and like still be a guy and like it can be cool. So you worry that there, there could be a sort of social contagion element of this? A teeny tiny bit, maybe. Looking back on it, it was the same pattern. Just kids who were really struggling, kids who were very alone and isolated. They have anxiety. They don't fit in with their peers. They don't know where they belong. Maybe they didn't have a welcoming family life. They just got caught up in these communities online. Then they discover, hey, there's this group of people. And they also don't fit in. They're different. They're not sure who they are. Gee. That's where I fit in. Today is the day before my top surgery. I am waking up tomorrow at 5 a.m. to have a subcutaneous mastectomy. We're telling children when they haven't fully developed that all you have to do is medically transition and you fit in. I was one of those kids. It got me at 42. Your child doesn't have a chance. Parents of transgender children, Affirming your child's identity is one of the most powerful things you can do to keep them safe and healthy. And you're affirming it with hormones that have never been used in this way. Puberty blockers, which are completely reversible. Completely reversible. One of the drugs used is Lupron, right? Which mm -hmm. has actually been used to chemically castrate sex offenders. You know what? I'm not sure that we should continue with this interview. So you don't want to talk about the drugs that you give to kids or? How can they be removing the healthy breasts of 15-year-old girls? As you can see, my nipples have been removed from my body. Where they are, I don't know. I am experiencing phantom nipple. Trans rights. This is only going in one direction. You will respect us. As parents, come to understand more about gender identity. Kids are coming out at younger ages. It's exciting. When you, when you see Desmond, what, what comes to mind? What do you think about? Inspirational. Yeah. Brave, courageous. Anyone can do drag. Everyone can do drag. Everyone can Your drag. mom can do drag. There's no genders. You can be male, female, any, or none. Only U.S. people can have a bunch of made-up genders. That's not true at all. No, no, no. What has this world come to? It's come to a world where drag kids actually exist. And people do ketamine on a couch. <laughs> it right is this next generation the next generation who's already telling us that our antiquated ideas of things have to be a certain way just don't apply to them they're rejecting a lot of our social mores they're tweaking the system not this but that here's a gender inclusive tip
Instead of referring to someone's sex at birth as biologically male or biologically female, instead use assigned male at birth or assigned female at birth. The emphasis being here on the word assigned and that it was the doctor who made that decision. What do you mean by assigned female? Who, who assigns female? Yeah, so um, most times people when they're born, um, they're assigned a gender. By the, the doctor. doctors. Yeah. Some women have penises, right? Some men have vaginas. When the, when the doctor sees the penis and says, this is a male, has the sex of male, that's a arbitrary distinction. Telling that family, based on that little penis, that your child is absolutely 100% male identified, no matter what else occurs in their life, that's not correct. Have you ever met a four-year-old who believes in Santa Claus? Mm hmm So this is someone who believes that a fat man is traveling through the sky on a flying reindeer at lightning speed, coming down his chimney with presents. Yeah. Would you say that this is someone who maybe has a tenuous grasp on reality? They have an appropriate four-year-old handle on the sure. reality Agreed. that's very real for them. Agreed. Agreed. But Santa Claus is real for them, but yeah. Santa Claus is not actually real. Yeah, well, and, but Santa Claus does deliver their Christmas presents. Well, yeah, but he's not real, though. To that child, they are. To your face, Ty. Makeup. You put makeup on it? Mm-hmm. How old are you? Seven. No, how old are you? Seven. You're four. No, it's seven. Are you a boy or a girl? A girl. A girl? Mm-hmm. Were you born a girl? Hmm? Were you born a girl? Yes. When you were a baby, were you a girl? Yes. Are you in a boy's body, though? Yes. Yeah. Okay, tell TikTok bye. Bye. When I see a child who, you know, believes in Santa Claus, and then let's say this is a boy and he says I'm a girl, mm -hmm. this is someone who can't distinguish between fantasy and reality, so how could you take that as a reality? I would say that as a pediatrician and as a parent, I would say how wonderful my four-year-old and their imagination is. So are gender and sex two different things, or? Well, I think that they, they both are and they aren't. I'd be, I'm comfortable saying that gender and sex are, are two different constructs, but they're deeply intertwined with each other. We're talking about gender and, and sex, and there's a lot of controversies there. If we're talking about a trans woman has all of the male physical characteristics, so would that not be a male then? Couldn't, couldn't we plainly say this person is a male? Well, wh well I guess it's, it's like, wh why are you asking the question? I think I, I, wa I want to understand sort of why that's so important. So if someone tells Just you... Just to, to sort of understand reality. Uh-huh. And why are you concerned with when someone else tells you that they're a man or even if they use the word male, why are you concerned with not believing them? I'm just, I'm just trying to start by getting to the truth, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm really uncomfortable with that language of like g getting to the truth. Again, in social why, why life- is that, Why is that uncomfortable? Because that, it sounds actually deeply transphobic to me. Um, and, if you, and, and if you keep probing, we're gonna stop the interview. I, if I probe about what the truth is? You keep invoking the word truth which is condescending and rude. I'm saying is, to you- How is the word truth condescending and rude? Why don't you tell me what your truth is and you're walking on 30 seconds more of the nights before I get up. What my truth is? Well, I don't think I really have a truth. I think that there's just the truth, like the reality. And so we should begin by trying to figure out what the reality is. Well, I mean, I think when someone tells you who they are, you should believe them. So if a person says that they're a woman or they're a man, then that's them telling you their gender is. This is a place of understanding truth, isn't it? Or Absolutely, we, are, we pursue truth, truth, truth and so I'm a social scientist, and that's what I but do. But you just said the truth is transphobic. Th that you would say, that you're, if you're saying the truth is that I get to say, you're not a man, show me your genitalia, that's transphobic. No, no, yes. I don't want to see anybody's genitalia. I, I, I just mean, Someone can make a statement about themselves that could be untrue. Like, for example, if I, if I were to say that I'm a black man, could you, would you accept that or would you be skeptical? Are you black? Are you African-American? Are you biracial? 
I don't think so. Okay. Well, you don't look that, and I don't think that's a, that, it doesn't sound like that's a genuine statement of who you are. Okay, so that's my point. I, I could make a statement about who I am that's incorrect. Of course, I think it's well established that human beings can lie, yes. Or not even lie, I mean, I could just be mistaken. Yeah. What is a woman? Why do you ask that question? I just really like to know. What do you think the answer to that question is? Well, I'm, I'm asking. That's why I came to a college professor. What other kinds of answers have you gotten? A lot of like this, where you're, where you're not answering, and I've gotten a lot of that, so. I'm reluctant to answer it, and I think that has a lot to do with the way, the questions that preceded it, and the, the way that you've conducted yourself in the interview. How have I conducted myself? How do you think you've conducted yourself? You, you, <laughs> you just really don't want to answer the questions, do you? I, I came today very willing and, and enthusiastic about answering questions about women's and gender sexuality studies, which is so the you wanted that to, I do. You wanted to answer questions about women's studies, and so shouldn't the, the first answer you should be able to provide is what exactly is a woman? Well, it's, it, for me, it's, it's actually a really simple answer, and that's a person who identifies as a woman. But what are they identifying as? As a woman. I but but what is that? As a woman. Do you know what a circular definition is? I do. It's sort of like what you're doing right now, where a woman is, is a woman. Mm -hmm. Does it mean that we don't have... Can men get pregnant? Uh, depends. I know, I know, what does I, it depend on? I know trans men that can get pregnant. That, that means it's a woman. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? N not in okay. this context. So I'm you not a biologist. The meaning of the word woman is so unclear and controversial that you can't give me a definition? Oh, I just put it over here. The baby has been able to latch, but. I have not been able to produce any milk. Trans women can be mothers. We are mothers. I'm your mother. Story time. This has been my first year in preschool with a class of my own, teaching alongside another queer neurodivergent educator, and we have been rocking our twos class. We've been talking about gender and skin color and consent and empathy and our bodies and autonomy. It's been fabulous. So today at the lunch table, when the topic of gender and genitals came up, one of our students plainly looked up and said, well, I'm a girl today, but I know that teacher Ko isn't. No, they're Enby. And the look on the incoming teacher's face was priceless. She was shocked in a good way. And she just looked around at the two of us and said, this class is incredible. And I am so impressed. You think that we'll corrupt your kids if our agenda goes unchecked. Funny, just this once, you're correct. We'll convert your children Happens bit by bit, quietly and subtly And you will barely notice it Gender creative parenting is a better option for parenting than assigning kids genders at birth Hey Davey Yes? If a person doesn't feel like they're a boy or a girl, what do we call them? They What are your preferred pronouns? Uh, they, them. These are not my preferred pronouns. These are my pronouns. Mappa, Nini, Nopa, Nori, Opa, Pere, Pom Pom, Zaza, Zizi, Trixic, Toric, Feminomoric, Viramoric, Allosexual. They, them, theirs. They're customizable. Anything can be a pronoun, really. Neurodivergent. Noun self pronouns. Animal. Noun self pronouns. New pronouns. So gender dysphoria. Is gender euphoria. I describe myself as a gender. What is androsexual? Gender queer person. Homosexuality. Bi doesn't really fit them. Lesbian doesn't really fit them. Pan, asexual, etc. Asexual, demisexual, and cupiosexual. Autosexual. Ace flux. Asexuality and allosexuals. Neuroqueer. Gray sexuality. Uh, I'm demisexual. Jexera is a gender identity that's similar to being a girl. 
Let's talk about cupiosexuals and cupio romantics. Let's talk about libidoist and non libidoist asexual. Pan gender. Non asexual aromantic and allosexual aromantic. Micro labels. People with penises or people with vaginas rather than saying male and female or men and women. Ooh, I'm here. I'm here, and I know you're scared, and I know you don't know what to do, but I've got you, and I won't leave you, and I love you, and I'm so sorry that you're scared, but it's okay to feel, it's safe to feel, it's safe to cry, it's safe to move through it. <sighs> Hi everyone! I don't think I've done like a general introduction yet as to who I am, so I thought I would do that now. Hi, my name is Bunny and I use bun pronouns. So who am I? I am a gender fluid, trans femme, pan romantic, great ace, white passing Japanese person. I'm Cody, pronouns E M er ers or Z Zem Zer Zers, or really any neo pronouns that aren't Z her hers. I am a white transmasculine femme non-binary, temporarily mostly able-bodied neurodivergent, obsessive, compulsive, chronically ill, culturally Jewish, unitarian, universalist, non-monogamous, demi-low romantic, gray demi-bisexual, survivor of acute and complex trauma, millennial, and cat parent in mental health recovery. Do you see this person next to me? E is my friend. C has had to put up with a lot to get to where Purr is today. I just want to let Glint know that Thon is valid, that Ver pronouns are valid, and that Sarah identity is valid. Hi, I'm Ash, and I'm throwing a gender tea party where you try on different pronouns and honorifics to see how they feel. Today I'm introducing a friend who uses A, M, Air pronouns. So this is for you if your name is Alex or Elliot. And if those aren't your names, but you like these pronouns, this one's for you too. My friend is so cool for coming to my party. It's exciting to get to know him better. A is drinking a dandelion tea with honey. If you want to get Emma refill, the gray cup is Air's. I can take it over to him. I love Air outfit. I didn't have to dress herself up for this party, but it looks great. If you like this pronoun set, you can thank him in the comments. A should be proud of herself for trying on new pronouns. I'm proud of him. Since you want an explanation that you're not going to listen to anyway, I'm going to explain this to you very clearly. People who use ghost ghost self pronouns do not actually think that they're a ghost since somebody told you that apparently. Um, they just feel that ghost ghost self is a perfect way to describe how they feel about their gender pronoun-wise. And it literally works the same way as if you would use somebody's name instead of a pronoun. It works the same way as talking about somebody in the third person. Literally, if I were to say Salem's favorite game is a PlayStation 2 game, and it makes Salem very happy that it still works, but then you replace it with a neo pronoun, so it will be Ghost's favorite game is a PlayStation 2 game, and it makes Ghost very happy because it still works. Like it's the same thing in a different font. Why is this so difficult for you to grasp? It's such a simple concept, and third graders can understand it. You're you, you're neither male nor female, right? That's true. I identify as non-binary, right. which means that I'm neither male nor female, and but correspondence to that, I use the they/them pronoun. There are a tiny minority of people who have some condition where they may have a female brain and a male body. Apart from this, we are all male and female, and the attempt to suggest that there is a third gender is, as far as I'm concerned, it's an ideological and a political project. It doesn't exist. The words male and female have existed throughout history, throughout the world. They refer, men are people who have penises, women are people who have vaginas. It's as simple as that. I would absolutely refuse to refer to the, this woman here, who's clearly a woman, as a they, because for me that would be imposing an ideological How is political she clearly a woman? system. Because she is. If everybody watching this program can see that she is a woman. The idea that you're saying that if this person chooses to say that they are they, that you can't engage with that because of your belief system. We live in a culture where lots of people have lots of different beliefs, as is very, very clear on today's show. We, we cannot say, I have this belief system, so therefore I'm going to impose it on everyone. In this, you, you can't do that. Like, she has a particular... She has a particular... She has a particular... I use the they, them pronoun. Please do not use gendered language to... C 
to address everyone. James Jackson, Sacramento, he, him. Brian Laverne, he, him. Hi, I am Andy P. Uh, from Los Angeles, they, them pronouns. Uh, thank you, Chair. Nick, he, him, his, from Twin Cities. James Jackson, Sacramento, DSA, he, him. Hi, my name is On Lin Wang, I use he, him. This is uh, Chris, he, him, from Cleveland. This is Daniel Ray from Piedmont, um, he, him, pronouns. My name is Trey. Uh, I use they, them, and he, him pronoun. Um, I use the term minor attracted person or MAP uh, in the title and throughout the book for multiple reasons. Um, first of all, because I think it's important to use terminology for groups that members of that group want others to use for them. Um, and MAP advocacy groups like Before You Act um, have advocated for use of the term MAP. Um, they've advocated for it primarily because it's less stigmatizing than other terms like pedophile. Uh, a lot of people, when they hear the term pedophile, they automatically assume that it means a sex offender. Uh, and that isn't true, and it leads to a lot of misconceptions about attractions toward minors. Um, I've definitely heard the idea that you brought up, though, that the use of the term minor attracted person suggests that it's okay to be attracted to children. Uh, but using a term that communicates who someone is attracted to it doesn't indicate anything about the morality of that attraction. And non-offending maps, by definition, do not abuse children, so their behaviors are moral. Um, but they're still being subjected to this same idea that they're bad people. Um, stigma against maps is a problem in part because it makes maps think that they're monsters. Um, that's really problematic in terms of map well-being. Um, it's really hard to cope when you think you're a terrible person uh, because you have attractions that you can't change. No, I sit on the stand. And to get hot, I got a lot of, I got hairy legs that turn, that, 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 that turn uh, um, blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair come back up again. They'd look at it. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap.